In this lesson, we will begin with the new chain of disciples, focusing on a young man who came from a Christian family but had a rebellious moment in his youth. From his story, found mostly in the book of Acts, we we'll learn how to deal with other Christians and even fellow leaders when they fall into sin. Hi, I'm Pastor Peter from Sweden and welcome back to the Word Grows Multiplying Disciples course. Thank you for joining me for this first section of Lesson 4. Immaturity often leads to sins which can torment our consciences for years afterward. I'm sure many of us are haunted by the sins of our youth which lead us to join King David and asking for God's forgiveness. You may recall the story of David, this great hero of the faith from the Old Testament was chosen by God to be the king of Israel and he wrote many psalms. When Jesus triumphantly rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the crowds shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Scripture calls David a man after God's own heart. Yet, David said to God in Psalm 25, Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. You may know someone in your life or ministry that is spiritually immature. That is, you have doubts about this person's commitment or ability to carry out God's great commission. We will begin with the story about John, also known as Mark. He's first mentioned in the book of Acts when Peter was miraculously freed from prison in Acts chapter 12. Mark's childhood home was the first place he went. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. From these passages, we understand that Mark was raised in a home which became a gathering place for believers in Jerusalem. In Colossians 4.10, Paul informs us that Barnabas, the great encourager, was Mark's cousin. It seems very likely that Mark grew up with the blessing of being surrounded by God's Word and believers in Christ. With his background, it is not surprising that Mark was involved from a young age in gospel ministry. Paul and Barnabas brought Mark with them when they traveled from Jerusalem to Antioch. They again involved Mark by taking him as a helper on their mission journey. As we learned in our previous lesson, Paul and Barnabas stopped at Barnabas' birthplace, the island of Cyprus, on their first mission journey. Mark most likely had other cousins and extended family on the island as well. Cyprus would have been a comfortable first stop in missionary work for young Mark. However, things quickly became more challenging for the young missionary. From Cyprus, the mission team sailed to the port of Perga on the mainland, which is modern-day Turkey. God would soon open doors for the gospel in that region. The mission team, though, would also suffer severe persecution. Perhaps it was fear of looming persecution. Maybe it was the daunting sight of the towering mountains surrounding Perga. It could be that Mark simply wanted to go home to be with his mother. Whatever the reason, Perga was the place Mark abandoned his fellow missionaries and returned home. Because he had deserted them on their first missionary journey, Paul adamantly objected to allowing Mark to participate in their second journey. Paul didn't trust Mark. Barnabas, the great encourager, and Mark's cousin strongly disagreed. We read what happened as a result in Acts chapter 15. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go back 
and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it wise to take him, because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. You may have encountered a similar situation in your life or ministry. What do you do when you have a gifted young person you'd like to involve in God's work, but who shows signs of spiritual immaturity? In the live class, you'll study a list of passages to help you navigate these circumstances. You'll also discuss step-by-step -step goals to help people like Mark grow spiritually and participate in sharing the gospel. Thank you again for joining me for the Word Grows, Multiplying Disciples course. I'm Pastor Peter. May God continue to bless our study of His Word and encourage us to make disciples who in turn make disciples.